Welcome to Papa Junk Shop. Yeah, I just had a brilliant idea. I got about, I don't know, half a dozen of these little generators that I paid between 12 and 20 bucks for. Putting there, all of them had the recoil starter broke, including this one. And this one was really destroyed in inside. The, even the uh, part the rope went around was broken. Those plastic parts don't hold up well. The other ones I was able to save the starters because that plastic dog broke and I made a pattern out of one that I glued back together and made a sand mold and made some out of zinc and they've been working well of course I'm careful with them I don't jerk it hard and I make sure it's engaged before I pull it and they've always worked well these little generators some people love them some people hate them I think they're pretty nice I mean they got their place they seem to work well this one was was so bad that I wasn't able to save any of it and I put a rope starter on it I think it was uh, originally one I saved off an old two-stroke. So I just wind her up around there and give her a pull and she fires right up. And I don't know, out of the six of them, this one's kind of my favorite. I don't know why. It just is. So what I was thinking I would like to do to it is put a couple meters on it so I can see what's going on. Not really necessary, just because I want to. I got a, a frequency meter and a voltmeter. And if I can pull this thing apart and find a spot in here where I can mount them, I'm going to give that a try. So that'll be today's project. Now this isn't related to this video, but yesterday I uh, this is my previous project. If you're interested, take a look at the video before this but I put this blade up yesterday so it's been a whole day and that cylinder that was so rusty held it up there the whole time never dropped down and it never leaked anything I can't hardly believe it just thought I'd show you that and it's been a while since I had one of these parts so I think I'm gonna have to take this gas tank loose at least There, but I don't, I don't 
don't want to fit there. No. So, see what's in behind this. Okay. I think I'm going to pull this thing right off of there so we can take a look. So, I'll shut you down for a minute or two. Yeah, I popped that gas tank off. I found a spot where I'll be able to put them. I don't know how well this is going to show up. But there's a spot right here, right beside, well, right here where this label is, beside the uh, on and off switch for the engine, that looks like I'd have room, and there's plenty of clearance in behind it. It won't interfere with anything. But one on top and one on the bottom. So that's what I'm going to shoot for. Now these little meters I got on eBay, they're digital things. They're reasonably accurate and they're real easy to install. You just use a half inch knockout punch. Makes them real, real easy. So I'm going to go ahead and get the holes punched in there for those. Okay, there's a couple little pieces sticking up here so it's not flat. Apparently on different models they use that for something. So I'm just going to take a little pair of nippers and nip that out of there. Then I can get my holes marked and drilled. But you get the idea. Get that flat and then I'll get them holes in there. Okay, I got my two holes drilled 3 8 for the punch. And I don't know if you, you guys are familiar with these or not. But this is what they use to uh, cut new holes in electrical boxes if you need to put a, a connector in where there isn't a spot. They work pretty nice for lots of things. This is for half inch conduit, which is 22 millimeters, which is what those meters take. So you just insert that part in there and just screw this on the back. I'm going to snug it up with my fingers. Once you get it snug, just take a wrench and you just turn this I should have got a little bigger wrench. I thought this was plastic and it would probably go pretty easy, but it must be tough plastic. There, just broke through. Pull that out. Now we've got a 22 millimeter hole, which this meter should pop right into. Just like that. Then you screw the nut on the back. So, I'll go ahead and get this other one out, and we'll make up a couple of wires. Now the wiring is just going to be, these two will be in parallel because it just needs to have voltage to it. This is voltmeter and this is frequency. And then they will just run over here and go underneath the screws with the neutral and the, the hot. And that's all there will be to that. And then it's just a matter of assembling it, giving it a whirl.
Be back in a little bit. Okay, got them mounted. Got some wires run over to the outlet, but I don't have them hooked on yet. Thought I'd try it on regular, regular power, make sure everything's working before I make the final connection. There we go. 121 volts, 60 cycles for here in the garage. Alright, I'll get those wires hooked on uh, the outlet and put her back together and I'll give her a try. Another thing I'm going to do while I got this bugger apart is there's a little rubber plug here on the end of this generator. And if you pop that out, You can take one of these outlets, which I think I robbed out of an old plug-in strip or something. I saved it from something anyways. I got a couple of them. And uh, that baby will just clip right in that slot. And you've got an extra outlet. You just run the, the two wires and the ground over to your uh, receptacle also. So that'll be a little, little upgrade, I guess you'd call it. Okay, got all the wiring hooked back up and just got this sitting in place. You can see there's lots of clearance here. Nothing's going to interfere with, with anything. The governor and everything is way back out of the way. And there's the uh, other outlet installed. So, get her back together and we'll try her. Okay, we'll fire this baby up and see if she's going to work. Got a little hot plate here to plug in. It draws about 700 watts and this thing is 800 watts so be a pretty good load for it. So we got the garage door open so we should be good there. Sometimes the noise will affect them if there's no load on them. So. Now with the load on, she went right to 60 cycles. We're running about 109 volts or so. No load, the voltage goes up pretty good on these, but you put a little load on them and it stabilizes pretty good. So I guess we'll call this project done and successful. 
Um, if you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up and uh, please subscribe. See you next time.